and this is Jar Art Spy and welcome to a new tutorial. Now I do apologise apologize if you can hear some humming in the background. The fan for the bathroom is on um, and I don't know why, it's really annoying me. Um, anyway, this tutorial is going to be printed, creating a pretty cool effect if I can find the folder where I put it. It's on here somewhere. Well, there we go. Nope, it's not that. No, nope, go away. That's college work. Where did I put it? Okay, I'm just going to search for it. I'm going to search dynamic light. This is awful. No, I didn't want to do that. Oh well. I guess I can show you in here. Um, let's let it load up. If it wants to load up. Okay, whilst that loads, I can do find the actual video. Here it is. And it lights preview. If I open that up if it wants to. My computer's running really slowly today, it's quite annoying. Um, okay, here we go. Let's play this through. I'm gonna turn my sound off because I don't want the feedback. Okay, right, this is what I'm gonna be making these dynamic lights. Now, I had changed it a bit since I made this. We can actually put, put them behind the pillars because obviously the lights are behind the pillars. But yeah, I was sort of making those lights flickering. The flickering's included as well, which is pretty cool. So you can obviously attach these onto lamp posts or anything, but I'm doing it on this. So if I just show you quickly what it actually looks like, let's get rid of this, 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 and this. We added the lights onto these two points here, this light here and this light here. Added them on, and as you can see in this example here, if I show you again, if I turn everything back on, you can see the lights need to go behind the pillars, and when it's moving, it looks a lot better. Um, so let's get get into creating this. We're just going to go to a new file that I was called this tutorial, and we're going to drag this. Um, make a new composition. Make it five seconds long. Zero five. Uh, like that. Uh, drag into tutorial. Then we want to drag our clip in. Okay, so here's our clip, and we want to basically find five seconds of this that we want to use. So I'm going to use all of this except. You need to do the scaling bit like you always do. So scale in. Voila, we've done that now. So we have our five seconds clip. Now the first thing we're going to do is motion track this. Now to do this, you need to go click on the layout, go to effect, um, the foundry camera tracker. Now to do this, you'll need camera tracker and video copilot optical flares. Um, just so you know. Right. So what you want to do is once you're in, open camera tracker up, you can untick render gen analysis. And bring go to, go to tracking. Bring the number of features down to seventy five. Um, and I'm just going to pause the recording here and let this render. Then I'll be back. And basically, what you want to do is just click track features. Then once that's done, click solve camera. Then once that's done, click create scene. Okay, so I'm back, and as you can see, it's a bit different. We've got some green points on the screen, and we've got these two new layers. Now, the main important thing when you track with the camera track is don't click out of After Effects. You have to have it open when you're doing it. Um, see, so yeah, I literally just click track features, wait for that to finish, solve camera, then create scene. So now we've got our scene tracked, we can just ignore everything now. Um, so the first thing we want to do is make the lights. So let's do layer, new, solid. We're going to call this light one. Uh, you want to click make comp size. Okay. We're going to go to effect, video, copilot, optical flares. And then we're going to go to uh, where it says render mode, change that to on transparent. And so far we've got this. Now you can then drag this to change the position to the light. And voila, we now have a light. But the thing is, if we scroll through it, it stays where it is, nothing happens. So the first thing you want to do is where it says the th little 3D cube is here. If, you, if, that's, if you've got this, click toggle switches equals modes down here. Then where it says 3D box, click that. Now it will most likely vanish. Um, the only thing is what's happened is it's gone behind the camera now. So to change this, if you go to position, if you hit P on the light and where it says zero, 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 if you bring that forwards um, like this, you can actually drag it forward. So let's just drag it forward until it's roughly positioned on the light like so. So now if we want to do this, you can see it pretty, It almost stays on the light. Now, the thing is with this, it is a lot of trial and error to get it right, the positioning and so on. So I'm just going to bring it a bit more back so it's closer. The closer the camera it is, the more accurate it, it is. And if it's like this, you can then just drag and drag it across and so on. So there, you can see it's now pretty much focused on the light. However, it's a bit too forward. Let's turn into a motion tracking tutorial. So I'm trying to get through this as quickly as possible. 
If I just play around until it looks like it's tracked onto the light, it'll be a bit further back. Like so. There we go, that looks pretty decent. It now looks like it's tracked onto the light. Okay, so now what we want to do is actually make this a light we want to use. So under optical flares, click options, and it should open up the optical flares menu. Let it, let it load for a second. Hopefully my After Effects doesn't crash because I've been doing lots of stuff in the background on my computer. There we go. So you want to go to where it says Motion Graphics in the preset browser and I like to use Vertical Limit down here. Now the first thing you want to do is where it says multi iris all the multi irises it's got click Hide, Hide, Hide and Hide. We'll get rid of all those horrible green lights that we had. Now the next thing I did, I wanted to change this because it was a bit too bright for me. Um, orangey, so I'm just going to bring it uh, whites up a bit, like so. Um, you can then go to somewhere where I think the glow down here, change the color of the glow up here, that will really help change it to a more whiter light. But you can basically just play around with it until you get what you like. Okay, so then, wow, it's a bit too much now. So, the first thing I want to do is where it says rotation offset onto optical flares, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. So it's on its side. Doesn't matter which way you do, just as long as you do it. Now next thing we want to do is bring the scale down. And it's way too big for a light. So maybe something like that. Maybe bring the brightness down a little bit. The brightness affects the brightness, the scale actually affects the scale of the flare. So let's do something like that maybe. So you just leave it at the 100 brightness. Next thing is you can duplicate this. Hit, so hit Command or Control D. Rename this light 2. And all you want to do is click on the optical flares and move it across to this light. So now hopefully if, you, if we watch this through you can see the lights are now in the scene. Now there's still a lot more we can do with this so first up we want to make the flickering of the lights. So to do that you want to make sure you're on this so we want the light too so this one here. Where it says brightness you want to click hold down the alt button and click the stopwatch and boom you get all this crazy stuff up. This is just basically basic coding. Now in editing there are there is a lot of coding involved um, if you want to make really good edits or even just editing real life videos or something. So we're going to be using the wiggle effect. Now this is basically, you you probably used the wiggle before in like creating camera movement, but what I'm going to do is use on the opacity or the brightness. It works best on, not the opacity, the brightness. And so it'll basically flicker the brightness. So let's just click wiggle um, two comma, oh, not full stop, comma 10, something like that. So now if we scroll through this, you can see the one on the on the right is getting is getting brighter and darker and so on. Now I'm just going to save this in case it crashes. Um, now you basically want to do the same thing on the other light. So go to the other light, click Alt on the stopwatch, click Wiggle. Now I'm going to change this up a bit. I'm going to make it go faster and change um, more like the brightness change more. So now the Wiggle thing. Let's explain explain this. The first value is how fast it does it every second, I believe. So the, the lower the number, the faster. And the second number determines how much it changes the value by. So let's do 0 0.5, comma, 25. Then close brackets again. And if we scroll through this one, so it's again, oh, it will take some time to load sometimes. Hence why we saved it, in case it crashes, because you've got the magic spinning wheel of death. Let's give it a second, it will do this sometimes. And it's kind of annoying, but once it's done this, there we go. Oh, oh, it's got the spinning wheel of death again. My computer doesn't like me today. Oh well. And I know two tutorials in one week. Well, it's kind of been a weekend because this is Monday today and stuff. So if we scroll through this now, you can see. Oh, it's going to be really slow and pixely. And actually, I've got it slightly wrong. The smaller the number is, the slower it goes. So let's put this up to maybe. Uh, save again. Now, if you watch this, you can see it's already got a lot, um, uh, like not as bright there. So that we're starting to get there now. So you can see that one's flickering a lot more than the other one. And this creates a really nice effect already. And because it's motion tracked, it actually looks like it's there. And obviously, you can change the previous one, the light one, light two as well, if you want to. Now, the main last thing we're going to do is um, mask it behind objects. So what you want to do is go to um, either light one or light two, it's your choice. Now on this one, um, it's pretty easy, we're just going to mask it behind the 
brickwork. So if I start down here, maybe I'm going to go up and follow the brickwork line. Just like there, and come down here, go across, come back up here, then go across here. And I'm just going to drag it, bring it along the top, bring it down, and go like that. And it's gone. Oh no. Um, that's good, don't worry. Now to hit mask on the layer that on, change the add to subtract. And there we go, we've now got the mask. And it is within the area, it's not going out the lines. But as you can see, we've got some harsh lines here. So we can change that by adding some feather. So we go to feather maybe five. That should look okay. There we go, now it's going to look a bit bad because we haven't got any colour correction on. But once you add a colour correction, it looks really good. Now the other problem we have now is that the mask isn't doesn't get motion tracked. Um, so to, to motion track the mask, all we need to do is just hit the the keyframe, the like the stopwatch next to the path at the beginning, go to the end, and what I do is just drag the entire mask along till it roughly kind of fits the same, and just adjust it a little bit until it's like how you want it. Zoom out. Play around a little bit, and you only need to do this like to the end of the thingy. So there we go. So now, if you watch through this, you can see the, the mask, it follows along the path quite nicely. And obviously, if you're like OCD like me, then you can go in, um, add more keyframes to the mask so it's more accurate. But this is all I do. Now, all we need to do now is um, go to the first frame, copy the mask, so Command or Control C, go to Light 2, copy. Um, command or Control V, or add the mask onto the second layer, and it's already animated the mask. So now, if we watch through this, you can see that that um, light now stays behind it. So we now have dynamic lights, and one of them is flickering, one of them is flickering, just not as much. Now, if we go ahead and drag my color correction, as well as the bars, add these in here, hop above the lights. And there we go, this is a really grungy map, so I thought this kind of, this kind of collection looks really good. And you can see that you can really tell the flickering in this. Um, it's obviously hard to see because of the colour correction, but this is the effect we've created, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to leave a like, um, comment on some suggestions you want, and I shall see you guys later.